Mm. Oh, wait. Gotta fix this. about right I mean, he looks like he's falling off but uh, does that make sense I don't care I don't know if that one does but it's an ice cube so second oh but it's so bright hi the brightness alone just really scares me it's just like ah oh, my eyes fuck see the other one was very comfortable but this this is uh, it hurts it hurts oh my god i love how there's I don't- I'm being sarcastic because I don't like it. I- I love how their skirts seem to... Um... Like... <laughs> defy gravity and be made out of... Something that isn't fabric. I- I don't really know what that is. Um... Music sound volume, auto forward time, skip options, we'll see V-Sync on V-Sync. Why do you, why do you need V-Sync? Ugh. I might have to turn the brightness down on my display, because I don't think I can on my... my Because I have, I have it on a separate monitor. Like, it doesn't... It, uh, I can't really... It wouldn't make a difference on my other uh, screen. Um, well, my other screen, it would. It's okay. It's okay. Um. Yeah, I turned it down by five, so that's that should be good enough. I wonder if it actually reflects that or not, because it is on a different model. I don't know, don't care. Uh, go back. Okay. Well. Is the music still too loud? Are they gonna call me senpai or something? Could you like that? Man, this takes me back. It takes me back to a weird time. Cause I barely like I I barely remember it. It's like weird. Okay. <clears throat> hey! <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Good, good start, good start. I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this. But starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. 
What if she's gonna chase after me like this? I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. We <sighs> 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 overslept again. They caught you this time. <laughs> Such a weird image. Maybe, but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Huh? You say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. That's mean, Fever. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. What? Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. We cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, Feth, have you decided to on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking either. Eh? That's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Is it just me or do her eyes seem far apart? I think I always thought that, actually. I think, no, that definitely, I definitely feel like that too. <clears throat> like, <laughs> especially if you think about it realistically is really funny. Like, one of her eyes just looks like it's like, about to pop out of her head. The one on the far left. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did, in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. <laughs> Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me, and when I'm perfectly content just getting on, getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. What? Your happiness is really important to me, you know. Her eyes falling out of her misshapen anime skull sounds very plausible. <laughs> she just leans too far forward or like gets her head knocked to the side and she's like... <laughs> and I know you're happy now, but I'd die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you, will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! <clears throat> Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit. Even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. She whips her head around too fast and they fling across, across the room. They have like little like elastic strings or like springs that like bring them, like pull them back in. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no I, no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I... Oh. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's gonna make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know. Know what? The ones who, like, try to get the ball into the spike, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that you could come to my club. Sayori. Yeah? There is no way I'm going to join your club. <laughs> Meanie. 
Sayuri is the vice president of the literature, literature club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the, after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. I've not played DDLC+, so I'm interested to see what's new. Ha! Uh, me as well. I've also not played it in a super long time, so I'm like blanking on everything. Like my memory is, which is good, which is good. I like when I don't remember playing a game that I want to replay. <clears throat> that said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kind of told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made... What, the cupcakes or something? I accidentally skipped it. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori's really that much of an airhead, or if she's so cunning as to have planned all this out. I let out a long sigh. Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes! Let's go! Uh, there's no difference between the anime club and the literature club. Both of them will have anime girls. <laughs> And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. Me too. I dejectedly follow Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone, the new member is here. I told you, don't call me a new member. I glance around the room. Welcome to the literature club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously? You brought a boy? Ready to kill the atmosphere. Ah, fever. What a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. <laughs> What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry. Natsuki. <laughs> the girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes her look like a first year student. She is also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear and then turns back towards the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. Uh, don't say things like that. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. Oh. It's great to see you again, Fever. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in, in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic. Basically, completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... You too, Monica. Come sit down, Fever. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me and Monica. The only thing I don't like about DDLC is that I can't pick a favorite. Honestly, I don't know who would be my favorite either. I think the first time I played it, it was Natsuki, but like... It was hard. I like... I liked her and, uh, Yuri. They're all mentally ill, it's great. <sighs> I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, 
It's been widened so that there is one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room, <laughs> where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. <clears throat> oh god. The only, uh, my favorites were also Natsuki and Yuri, just because of how, like, creepy things get with both of them. Especially Yuri. See, I don't remember any of that shit, so this is great. <laughs> I don't remember anything. All I remember is that Yuri was shy and Natsuki was a tsundere. And Say Sayori, um, you know. You know. <laughs> and that Monica's crazy. God, my throat hurts. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room, where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and- Oh, I already read that. <laughs> Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Oh. Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white, fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayori grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I had such an intense hyperfixation on it for like two years when it first released. I don't remember every detail, but this being the plus version which makes things interesting because I don't know what was added or changed. Ah, Yuri and I are far too similar, especially in that regard. <laughs> the creepy part? <laughs> uh, okay, I think I read that. Mm -mm. Uh, I... I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? Is Waffles barking? Is that what I'm hearing right now? Alright. I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. But don't worry, I'm also really creepy. On the inside. On the outside, I feel like I could be one of those, like, serial killers that are really charming that you just don't- you don't- expect they would ever kill someone, but on the inside... There's a lot. There's a lot going on. <laughs> the... I think I read that on iTunes. <laughs> this is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Well, why are you thanking me? It's not like I... I haven't heard this. Haven't I heard this con so this somewhere before? Fuck. Made them for you or anything? Huh. I thought you technically did. Sayori said, "Well, maybe, but not for y you. Uh, you know, you, dummy." All right, all right. <clears throat> I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Uh, that that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. <laughs> I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least I enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider the literature club? Um... I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. 
Well, I haven't joined, joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seems pretty happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. Well, we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know, to be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicly publicity and how to prepare for, for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. And I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like the festival that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah. We'll do our best. You know it. Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. If this is a confession, I guess it would be simplest to say I'm a mix of Yorick and Monica. <laughs> Good. We all have a bit of Yandere inside of us. <laughs> Honestly, I'm like, I'm really excited to work on my, I have like a whole complicated visual novel idea for that, are, that the two main characters are based, uh, <laughs> um, are based on that trope but it's it's gonna it's definitely gonna be like focused on like the creepy stalkerish like lovesick part of there's gonna be i don't, I don't want to spoil it because i want to take it seriously it's definitely something that i want to finish i have way too many ideas and like unfinished projects and i really want this one just to see this one through through oh yeah i found out the ptsd no you Okay. <laughs> um. <clears throat> oh. Did that work? It's gonna be a good game that you make. I'm personally very excited for it. Thank you. Oops. Because <clears throat> it's just such an interesting concept. Because as much as, like, I can't listen to true crime anymore or anything like that, there's always something very, like... Every time I hear stuff about... You just, like, real people. You know, like, I've, I've heard a lot of, like random things about like it's usually like a crazy girlfriend that's like that will like uh even after breaking it the guy like or whoever their partner was broke up with them will like follow them at their work or like do like weird shit like that or like i think it was either a nightmare i had or a um what was it uh fucking some story I heard uh, of like this girl who had a box um, in her and her boyfriend's room that she told him never to look into and one time he did uh, and it was like it was like just random sh like stuff of his that should have been thrown in the garbage like receipts and fingernail clippings Oh no, the nightmare I had was something about fingernail clippings and something similar, but it was, it was, it was different. It was, 
I think it was grosser. So the other one was, that was definitely a true thing that I heard. People are fucking weird, and I'm just like, there's a part of me interested in psychology where I'm like, that's so fucking, like, it's fascinating. Obviously it's not, I don't, <laughs> I don't want that in my personal life, but like, <laughs> like what, what possessed this person to act this way? <clears throat> the Kira Nightmare. Oh my god, he was such a creepy character. And I'm just, I'm, for some reason, writing horror is just my specialty. <laughs> but I, I also want to make it very conflicting with, like, wholesome stuff and that, so. Alright. Um, maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. People seriously are weird if you need a freaky stalker story to reference I've got when I personally experienced. Oh god. <laughs> Sorry, you had to go through that. Ugh. So, I don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, Fever, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh. Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? Also, I don't like complaining or anything, but I did block that person because I'm like, what kind of what kind of person f follows a uh, a game category just so that they can join when someone starts streaming it and shit on them for it? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I mutter quietly to myself, half joking. Obsession can lead a person to do strange and terrible things. Yeah. But the... Uh, the the story that I want to make is also going to be of, like... It's going to be much more of a... Kind of, like, mystery thriller that you're trying to figure out what's going on. Ow. I scratched myself. Um, then... I want to make it kind of seem like the like a little bit of like an otome but it's it's not it's not gonna be an otome um, i mean it might it might seem like it. i don't know i have different perspectives of like what is considered uh romantic or not because something i write might be very like mild to me but to someone else they'd be like oh my god <laughs> But in my head, I'm just like, oh, this is just... ever. Yeah, that person. <clears throat> it's funny because their name looks like Sonic Cunts. They definitely were a cunt. Alright, Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. <clears throat> Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. Absolutely was. Uh, I was hoping I misunder- understood their message wrong, but I suppose not. Yeah, no, people are just assholes. <laughs> I've been lucky not to run into many of them since I started streaming. Um... <clears throat> the level of creativity and craftsman's craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in. But it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds some finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But, you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I have been reading a lot of horror lately. That's my girl! Oh my god! 
Ah, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimal level. <laughs> at this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with our rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I guess you could say that. But, oh. But if a story makes me think, or it takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very success successful <laughs> at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Okay, so I know who's my favorite now. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad that I've uh, been a bad influence. <laughs> Is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes start over for me for a split second. Never mind. That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? Uh, what? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... Uh, don't say it out loud! And give that back! Fine, fine. It's worse when they act like normal. Sometimes they slip up in conversation, but if you're not looking for it, you won't notice. Ah. Oh. Mm -mm. It's been a good influence. I love spooky stuff that is kind of fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems, everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sayori sl <laughs> slides up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! Natsuki, you write your own poems? Uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no. Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Uh, not a very confident writer yet? I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? <clears throat> Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yeti. Natsuki likes some VTuber with a not cute tag. That's a thing. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> oh my god. I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay. I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yeti look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh, um... Yeah, let's do it! Plus, now that we've got a new member, I think it'll help us all a little more comfortable with each other. And strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Fev? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. Hold on, there's still one problem. Huh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind this entire time. I never said I would join this club. Coyote may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made my decision. I still have other clubs to look at and, uh... I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. Monica looks so sad. But, but... I'm sorry, I saw it. Either. I, you all... Uh, I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is... 
If writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy. Sadie wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey, you really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I'd be super pissed. And that makes it official. Welcome to the literature club. Ah, uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think that we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment? Write a poem to bring to the next meeting, so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Fever, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. <clears throat> hey, Fever. Since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Sayori and I never walk home together anymore, because she always stayed after school for clubs. Sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the classroom and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have a chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright. I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances. And I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Ooh. Ah. Ooh, the music. Time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. That's a cool, um... Wow. Feature. I really like that. Alright, save. Auto save. Uh, empty slot. Oh my goodness. Here's... Oh my goodness. Uh, okay. Oh, speaking of tea, my throat. I would really like to make some more. But, oh, why? Why are we doing this? Okay. <laughs> but, don't know if somebody's out of the kitchen or not. I, you know what, fuck it. I'm just making tea. I'm not gonna make it take up that much room, even though our kitchen is small. Oh yeah, I really like this song. This is so cute. The meter is really high though, is it? Like on the on my OBS. Is it that loud? Oh. Mm -mm. Or can you hear me okay? Cause I'm like looking at the the bars. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that's I that's weird that it that it But yeah, thanks for letting me know. Alright, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna see if uh I can hear you go over there. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's it that's so Yeah, um I'll be right back. <laughs> I O C D gets so bad sometimes. Okay. Okay. <laughs>
spot. <laughs> I accidentally picked a word. I think I can, I can just do this though. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, milk! <laughs> How fitting. Aura, anxiety, shopping, fear, milk, doki doki, secretive, whisper, climax, <laughs> ebop. Hey, what's up? Milk and Fear. Uh, I want to write a poem called Milk and Fear. Mm. Fear. Play, sing, poof. Cheer, entropy. Entropy. I'm sending you something you should look at if you have time after it since. Okay. Funk. Oh! <laughs> fear of... Oh no. <laughs> What is entropy? I feel I've heard that word before, but entropy. Entropy is a scientific concept of that is mostly most commonly associated with a state of disorder, randomness, or uncertainty. Ooh, I like that. Shame, existence, massacre. <laughs> um. This reminds me of a poem that I wrote once, actually. Entropy equals decay. Oh, maybe it- wait. Did I spell it wrong then? <laughs> when I looked it up? I might choose Massacre because I have to find this poem. I- 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 I showed it to my English teacher in college and I was surprised that she actually liked it because what really what happened... It was a homework assignment but I, it was a poem that I had already written when I was depressed and I just was too lazy to write another one <laughs> for the assignment so I sent her that and she actually liked it which I thought was funny. Um, is it under songs? Watch me have gotten rid, rid of it. I probably did. Nope. That's not it. <laughs> nope. Nope. That sucks. It's, it's not under uh, self-study, maybe? Oh my goodness. Oh! No, that's not it. This is a different one. Uh, reusing poems is related. Well, you used to do that as well when it came to a thing. Here's a random one. The world is my torturer, but I will keep reaching for the stars until I can't see them anymore. Then I will lay on my bed of thorns and the world will have me no more. I don't know what that's like. That's really sick. I don't. My goodness. These are just, all this, this whole folder is just 90% Nightmares <laughs> I've had. <laughs> Probably under songs. Uh, this one, what is this? This is recent, I think. March 29th. <clears throat> I feel heartbroken with no heart to break. I feel sick as the. T <laughs> I'm in there, right? What, in the nightmare folder? <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, actually, there was that one nightmare that I had that had you in it. When you, you kind of turned into a monster, but that's irrelevant. I feel heartbroken with no heart to break. I feel sick as the clock ticks, but I look fine on the outside almost every day. I was told my eyes are cold, but I feel like I'm boiling inside. 
Time to die, time to die. The crow, the crow calls when I look at the evening sky. Get away, get away from me. You deserve so much better. Should have left me to float or rot in the gutter. I'm small enough, a little piece to just melt away. Helios and the optimists can have me as they seize the day. Who am I hurting when I run away? Never find an answer through warped and wicked ways. I think my favorite that I probably have. What is this? Mm. This was, okay, this was part of that original poem that I showed to my teacher. Uh... <laughs> Let the worms seep from your mouth along with the lies they eat for breakfast. Pray on Sunday, I feel like pray on Sunday, get me the hell out of here. Life is a lethal curse, blanketed with, blanketed with dreams. We pay for every verse and nothing's as it seems. I can't be okay with what goes on in this place, this plane of existence will never be safe. If it's not my problem, it's still in the air, what happened to being human, is anyone even here? I know there was something about Massacre and Roses, but I guess I deleted it. I suck at reading poetry. I don't know why I'm like, I'm decent at reading dialogue, but I am horrible at reading poetry. My god. But... <clears throat> I also have like this knot in my throat. Um... There's one more, there's one more that I... Oh, oh god. Sudden ASMR reading. Is it? I feel like my voice isn't that great. I feel like it's filled with issues. Like a... I feel like it's like... My... My... <laughs> oh, that is a disgusting analogy. <laughs> Oh god, should I even say it? I feel like some things that are in my brain just shouldn't be allowed to come out. <clears throat> the man is a mystery. Okay, okay. I, s <laughs> I, I feel like my throat, because it's like, you know, like a tube, my throat is like a sewer and shit just comes out of it. Like my mouth, uh, everything that comes out of my mouth is just shit. Aw, I really appreciate that. That makes me really happy. Cause I've always been, I think, I, I think everyone is, but I, you know, I've been self-conscious about my voice for uh, forever. I've only like recently started to be like, eh, okay, I can, you know, I can appreciate some things, but, but that makes me happy. All right, the man is a mystery. The man is a myth, a mist that dyes the seas red. The hearts and the bodies that are fed die and bleed. Tarnished is father time that is relentless to me. Red wolf, white wolf, both make an eclipse. And in the middle is the man, is the mirror, is the myth. A motherfucking shadow you could only dream to kiss. <laughs> Voice is really nice, but, but I think you really <laughs> <laughs> I do, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> Alright, oh my god. My tea is gonna burn my mouth, but I need it so bad. My mouth is just like... <sighs> thank you! That's exact, that's so funny, because that's the one that I wrote for, um, and to give to Vigil, so they definitely are meant to be metal <laughs> lyrics. I've only one day. My my only other wish is to like is to learn how to scream sing because I think that would be so cool. Like nobody that nobody would ever imagine me doing that, right? But if I could just like, uh, you know, like, ah, uh, that'd be so cool. Uh, all right. Anyway, explode, tears, whirlwind, cry, daydream, frightening. 
Okay, let's see what we have so far. So we have... Ooh, ooh, I want to give myself some homework. I'll probably do it later and put it in my Discord server or something. But I want to take the, the, um, the words. I'm on board for Screamo Fib. <laughs> yes! Alright. Um, I want to take the words that we choose for each poem and try to make my, uh, my own actual poem for it later. Uh, I don't know why, but I find the game's happy music being good. <laughs> what you're reading behind it is so amusing. Yeah, I thought about that too. I was like, wait a second, there's something, something's, something's off about this. <laughs> Alright, so we have fear, massacre. I want to pick daydream. Even though I know we're supposed to just use, um... You know, if I, if I do... I mean, I'm assuming if I, at least the, the majority of the words are geared to one personality type, it'll still work. Because I really like the thought of Fear Massacre Daydream. I'm doing that. Prayer, lazy, tenacious. Fuck tenacious. No, I'm not doing that. That's, that would suck. Okay. Unstable philosophy, kitty. <laughs> Fear massacre, daydream, kitty. Passion, dance, dazzle, broken. Mm. Fear massacre, daydream. Uh, the world is in peace. <laughs> Fear massacre, daydream. Unstable. I'm thinking way too much about this. Melancholy, sweet, beauty, romance, fester. Ooh. Fester is a gross word. I like that. <laughs> uh, disaster, intellectual, strawberry, playground, color, holiday, precious, contamination. Fear, massacre, daydream, and stable, fester. Mm. Festering strawberry. Contamination. Scars. Ooh. A fun, shiny papa. <laughs> papa. <laughs> Promise music. A tone. Ooh. Crimson. Valentine. Contaminated Valentine. <laughs> uh. Contaminated promise. Heart. Journey, silly socks, silly socks, inferno, lucky extreme, spinning, art, mm. um, Hello. oh my god, there's 20 of these, alright, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try them, art, I feel like that was the wrong decision, whatever, sad poem about silly socks. Blanket, variance, fluffy, essence, childhood, heartbeat. Uh, variance. I'm gonna say. Okay. I don't know if I'm gonna make this work. Essence. Uh, pouch. After image. Hmm. Thing is, I'm not gonna. I don't. I'm not gonna make myself put these in order because that would. That would suck. Suicide. Nice. Great. Uh. <laughs> Pout. After image. I don't. I can't imagine how. I'm just gonna do misfortune. Hopelessness. Pain. I like pain. No, no, I don't. Silly sock suicide. Um. Cheeks. <laughs> Melody. That's pretty. Marshmallow. Despise. Death. Swimsuit. <laughs> Bunny. Sleep. Hurt. Mmm. Of it. Uh, uh, 
then stop drawing if, you, if your hand's cramping. Special chocolate. Sticky. Mmm. Covet. I think I know what that means, sort of. It's something to do with love, right? Puppy. Or Ocean adventure. Flea. Heaven sent. Ooh. Hawaii. Hawaii <clears throat> desu ne. Okay, waterfall, skirt, fireflies. Candy, insight, nightgown, disoriented. Hmm. Sure. Disoriented. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Imagine, like, if. Um, imagining if some time in the future somehow somebody sees me in person and they they like recognize me and they do that to me i would probably i would probably gag just out of reflex and and it would be awkward because i just i just kind of like put my hand up and like look away and be like <laughs> and try to get away from them i'd feel bad afterwards but Oh god. Oh god. Alright, incapable. Wrath. Ooh. I'm say incapable. Spelled that wrong. Mouse, anime, bliss, alone. Marriage. Unrestrained. Ooh. Desire, infallible, pink, question, fickle. Dream judgment. Hmm. That's a thick. Yes, we're finally done. Goodness. 20 fucking words. Marriage is a horror story itself. Hi again, Fever. Glad to see you didn't run away from us. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but uh, I at least... I at least keep my word. Can I drink my tea yet? Oh my god, I feel like... I feel like I need it. I feel like it's like my medicine. I feel like it's my, my drug. Ah. Okay. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Fever. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not even accustomed to it. Oh, come on, like he deserves any slack. Sayuri told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the, in the club room. <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and Manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Beaver always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Exposed. Like cooking, cleaning my room... How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two really are good friends, aren't you? Might be a little jealous. How come? You and Fever can become good friends, too. Uh, Sayori. As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh! Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Oh, wait, Sayori... Eh? Me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never mind. Sayori... Oh. Sayori made it sound like a big deal, but it's really not. What do I... Too. Eh? 
I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to re rescue this situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So, any nice gesture from you is a pleasant su surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Uh, is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright. Hmm. Sorry, I have to take a lot of tea breaks before it goes cold. Wait, oh, well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How's this girl accidentally being so cute? My brother has like 10 games downloading at the same time. What the fuck? <laughs> you keep freezing every two seconds. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, if it's that like, of like... If it's, if it's, you know, that bad, you can just watch the VOD later. I know it's not as fun, but... Mm -mm. Oh my god, why does it keep doing that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> she even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. No, I mean, that sounds like it sucks. Like, if you can't, if it, you know, it's just frustrating, then the VOD is always an option because it stays up there for seven days. And I'm gonna upload them all eventually to my uh, channel too. <laughs> I enthusiastically take the book. Yeah. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Watching your stream feels like another way of hanging out with you, so I like being here. Well, I like being y you, <laughs> you being here too. Hmm. Now that everyone's settled it. <laughs> Oh. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Sayori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression. Like she's she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki's rumma rummaging around in the closet. I'm glad I'm not too frustrating in text form, at least. Huh? Meanwhile, uh... <clears throat> I don't think you're frustrating. Natsuki is... Alright, uh, why do I keep <laughs> forgetting that I read something already? I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I'd feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. I'd prefer it if you stayed, Ellie, keep the chat active. I can do that on my own. Ellie's like the life of the party type of person. she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh. It's fine. If this was an actual party, I'd be curled in the corner crying because there were many people to watch noise. Well, listen... We hermits and nerds make our own parties, and ours are better because they're they're contained and they're quiet and they're comforting. I think real parties are they sound awful. I never want to go to one. Even as a kid, I always hated birthday parties. One of my birthday parties I had, I think, when I was like six or something. I distinctly remember crying 
because I was overwhelmed um, <laughs> by like all the how many people were there and like how much noise there was and that there were other children and shit like I <laughs> just <laughs> fact that my fucking VTuber keeps doing that every time the best type of party is a quiet party where no one is drunk and everyone is dis disrespect is respectful <laughs> If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed it in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm hmm Oh, no. I think I only went to one homecoming. And it was... Uh... No, I, w I went to two. They, uh... They were bad. to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Ah, uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, uh, I see. I had a panic attack so bad the police and ambulance were there. Oh no. <laughs> The only time I've been to a party when I was living on a military installation, and I just went for them for the booze. Valid. Valid. <laughs> There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well... Mm, Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous-looking eye symbol on the front cover. Alright. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give it- give anything away. Mm -mm. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison. What the fuck? I've only been drunk off one like a total of five times and never had booze. Doesn't booze just mean... Alcohol? In general? Illuminati. Uh... And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose those who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... kind of dark, isn't it? Yeti made it sound like it was gonna be a nice story, so that dark turn came out of nowhere. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort- fan of that sort of thing, Fever? No, it's not that. Regardless of whether or not anyone knew me, I, I could show up with some liquor and beer and drink one when I thought at good times. I just need to follow the sound of loud music. That sounds like a vibe. Unfortunately, I've only... I'm not supposed to drink anymore because of my health condition. But, uh... When I did, I unfortunately mostly only did it either alone... Ooh. In high school, when I shouldn't have, or just because I was bored, really, uh, and depressed, or with my ex, who basically forced me to drink. Uh, so that wasn't fun, and that happened a lot. And then there was this good time, though, that my mom, I visited, like, my mom one year for the summer, and she, uh, she let me have some... What were they called? Shmirnoff? Ice? But like... They were like... They tasted like lemonade, but, but it was beer. It's pretty good. And we were playing, uh... What is that? What is it called? It was, it was this funny, like, meme card game that we all played with my little sister. It was really funny. Pantosan. I might need a cough drop. 
What is that emote? Disgusting X. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, I wanna put a cough drop in my mouth, but I don't know if it's gonna make my like voice sound good. Enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. Oops. So. Ugh. I forgot I ate like these crackers earlier that have herbs on them, and now my burps taste like garlic. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is up to those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. Darn crackers. <laughs> it almost sounds like a racist thing. It's just that those kinds of oh, it's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if it's like worse than Onion though. I think Onion Onion's pretty bad. Onion's like the worst in my opinion. Garlic rye chips one of my weaknesses. Hmm. That sounds good. I forgot what rye is. Isn't that like a type of wheat or something? They... Oh, I already said it. When horrible things happen, not just because someone's, someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals or their own philosophy that they believe in, then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. <laughs> I'm rambling, aren't I? Yeah, it's kind of wheat bread. Ah. Alright, I have to be careful because I have a bad habit of, like, accidentally inhaling or swallowing, uh, cough drops and, like, giant candy that I should not, I should not be. exactly what you're talking about. I like those. Can't have them anymore though. Gluten allergies. <laughs> I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I like let things like books and writings from my, th from my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... Uh, I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Yeah, I really like Yoti. Ah, uh, th that's... Well, that's true. In fact... I might as well get start reading it, right? You don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. <laughs> mm -mm. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yeti's. Yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. <laughs> That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. 
or what if they like ex their their eyeballs extend they're like stretchy they're like these giant thick worms that rest in their brain and they slither out of <laughs> mm, I see. Well, just let me, uh, tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, Alright. Go, go, gadget, eye worms. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Aww, how cute. Sorry. I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I, I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk uh, until it's up against Yuri's. Then hold my book more between the two of them. Uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Uh, I guess it makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Yuri reminds me of me in public so much. Mm -mm. The neck. Oh my god. <laughs> Did you see that? Mm. Also, I realized it's kind of like when you have a cough drop in your mouth and you're talking a lot, it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> mm. Alright. <sighs> Here. Oh, that's a cute CG. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, it, uh, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face, and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Uh, to turn the page. Ah, uh, sorry. Degenerate thoughts. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. Suck on it quick. <laughs> That's so funny because I like kind of forgot what we were talking about or what I said. <laughs> That's not really how it works, though. I can't. I can't really speed up the process. I'm trying not to fucking choke every time I look at my VTuber when that happens. <clears throat> oh my god, that would be such a cute cosplay. I wanted to do. Um, I think I wanted to do like a. Gender bent Natsuki at some point. I'm short, I'm angry. I think I could do it. <clears throat> but I look awful in pastels. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Oh, yeah, that would be cute. Uh, that's okay. You're not. Know, as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. I yeah. What? That's not true. Mm -mm. <laughs> Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, 
so I turn it by my own volition. Mm -mm. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. I only ever cosplayed once a long time ago as Alucard. Oh, hell yeah, that's awesome! I love Alucard. Mm -mm. Yeah, I haven't cosplayed too much, and I've, I haven't really, like, I haven't been to a con in years. And even when I did go to a con, I didn't cosplay, like, what I wanted. I just kind of cosplayed what my friends wanted. <laughs> my thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? I've never been to a con before, but I've always been terrified of them. Yeah, I mean, they're both really cool and can be definitely intimidating. <laughs> I, um, I really, I still, even though it was, it was like, you know, retelling the story, it, it, so, it sounds like scary, but it was really fun when I went uh, to one in Atlanta and I, um, I don't think I've ever seen two people read a book like this. <laughs> Hello, ghosts. Welcome to the stream. Uh, yes, yeah, I've never, <laughs> I've never even imagined this. Uh, it sounds uncomfortable, but uh, Sympathy of the Night Alucard, to be specific, my Hair grade very early in life, so it was good fit for me. Ooh. Well. I don't... Um, wait. I've never... I've heard genuine horror stories from other plus-size cosplayers being treated not so great. Oh, no. See, I don't... People shouldn't care about that. Cause it's like, Especially because... If you're... If you're gonna cosplay, I mean, it's like... That's why I hate, I hate fucking like TikTok and like looking at cosplayers on TikTok because they're all, especially for bigger things like Genshin, there's like all these like thirst traps and all these like unnecessarily attractive people just being like, ooh look at me, this is how I am like out of cosplay, look how cool I am with my cool hair and my piercings and my flawless face and then look at me in cosplay and like wow, OMG, I'm like this character, I'm so perfect. And it just... I just really don't like it. I'm not like, oh, good for you. You know, whatever. But it does create like this, this expectation when I feel like it should just, it should be the opposite. It should be just like, you, whatever skin color you are, whatever like size you are, you should be able to dress up as your favorite character. Like it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be not, not judgmental because people are gonna cause judge cosplay anyway and be like oh it's not halloween like what the fuck are you doing that's weird but yeah um i don't know fuck those people if, if they want to be like that not not just not the ones that are like you know create that expe expectation um unintentionally but just the ones that are actually going to be like judgmental to the people who don't fit the the that expectation <clears throat> what is that noise um yeah yeah no if we'll, we'll go to a con together one day and if anyone has if anyone says anything, I will actually fucking, I will, I will, I, no, I've had daydreams about this. I had daydreams about this where I went to cons with you and Trace and I actually, like, I started a fight with people. Like, I will not, I will not hesitate. If somebody says something, I will go off like a fucking attack dog. <clears throat> How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second guesses all the things that she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything. But they're kind of rep reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. I, I see. 
<laughs> Yuri remained silent for a moment. But, Fever. I like to imagine I'll have like a giant foam sword and I just fucking whack somebody upside the head with it. A terrible thing to have in common with her. Wait, what did she say? Fuck. Uh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm chewing the rest of my cough drop. Sorry, I didn't really know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. A Minecraft sword. I guess I more meant that it's kind of cute. What are you saying all of a sudden? I've actually wanted to cosplay Inuyasha for a long time. Don't apologize. I like having- I, I really like having conversations in the middle of streams. <clears throat> okay, everyone. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Uh, Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is it, uh, uh is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Uh, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Ow. Alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer if I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case... Oh, fuck. <laughs> in that case, feel free to finish the last two chapters in your own time. Imagine if it was like that in real life. Someone just, like, slides in from the corner of your vision. Just, like, not not any walking and, like, movements at all. Just, like, they just slide in. <laughs> in that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book. Then slip it back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? I yeah. Sorry. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. Watch like none of the lines rhyme with each other. <laughs> I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! The MC has god tier memory. Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayori is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. Oh, I always love composition notebooks. I don't know what, it's just like the aesthetic of them. <laughs> I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well. Reaching into their bags, I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? Yuri! Yuri seems the most experienced, so I should start with her. I can trust her opinion to be fair. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes light. Exceptional. Huh? What was that? Hmm? Uh, did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. I... He's going to hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? <laughs> oh god.
Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Hmm, my jaw popped. Oh, you know what? I didn't do fucking vocal warm-ups today, that's probably why. Ugh. But also just talking a lot the past few days. Uh, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, every time I, like, not every time, but a lot of the time if I stretch my jaw and I, like, move it to the side, the left side always just, just, just you know, like, just pops. <clears throat> okay. Yuri stares at, stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most notable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick up a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes from practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased though. Oh, she's gonna hate my... <laughs> she's gonna hate what I wrote. Yeah, poetry is awesome. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri's apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a ra rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be the literature club? Oh boy. Mm -mm. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calms breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers, I flicker back. That is so nice, what the hell? I'm sorry I have such a terrible handwriting. What? <laughs> he said what? <laughs> I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Huh? That's a relief. Also, I liked the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really, really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, though. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. <clears throat> but remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. 
They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Huh? It's nothing, really. Yours was impressive, too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. You know, I was really nervous about doing all this. But in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Fever. Uh, me too. Maybe we should show her a poem to next. Let's just, um... Monica. Hi, Fever. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Mm -mm. Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I'll have to. She's always listening. Don't worry, Peter. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier that we can all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm-hmm. Great job, Fever. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. They're not the only one. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're all listening. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> oh, wait, I think... Ah, oh, okay, I get it. My brain lagged. That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when the readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level. Oh. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. Just do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to get, uh, to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kinds of styles. But I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Oh, don't worry. I'm just confident that I'm a failure. <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole in a wall. It couldn't have been me. See? The direction the sparkle for the Does that say spackle? It's probably Sparkle. <laughs> Protrudes. A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I appear inside for a clue. 
No, I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas, already scorched with a permanent copy of a meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. Weird. Technically, Monica is right. You don't have to worry about impressing any of the other girls. Hmm. Spackles. So, what do you think? Hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Alright, I have to piss so bad. So be right back. Not before I drink some more fucking water. I always do this shit. <laughs> Your kitten is screaming at you. Oh man. Ugh, it's only 10 p.m., but my throat is so. <laughs> I'm putting my hoodie on in the corner. <laughs> there you go. I'm, I'm not meowing back at her. Alright. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't know how much longer I can last before my th I feel like my throat is just being stabbed. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on, 
emphasis on the timing between words and lines. <sighs> when I performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany re recently. It's been influencing my poems, uh, poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that, because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, mm. here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, you'll never make any progress. That's a good tip. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So, move your hand, and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening! <laughs> Don't push yourself too hard. Even if we'd rather you kept streaming, your health is more important. Thank you. Yeah, because I'm... Mm, I'm like trying to just ignore it, but I hate sore throats. And I'm gonna have to... I wanna have like... A semi-decent sleep schedule, because I might be getting a new job soon where I have to wake up at 8 a.m. Or leave. I have to leave at 8, 9, 8, 40. Yeah, I gotta wait. I'll, wait. I'll have to wake up at 8 a.m. <laughs> Alright, uh, show it to Natsuki. Beaver, if you're not gonna take this club seriously, then go home. <laughs> what the fuck? It's like she heard me yawning. What? Marsh. What? You expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put an effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. <laughs> Painful to think about. Is that the schedule? Hmm? I'm not worried about it, because I mean, it's like... I don't... It's gonna be regularly, like, three days a week. And then... I can pick... I'll pick up ships... Shifts... <laughs> if, if people, like, call off or whatever. And I'll be there for eight hours each day, I think, but like... It's really not, it's really not that bad. I mean, compared to the jobs I've worked where I had to wake up at like 4 a.m., yeah, that's, I don't really... Plus, if I get to work at a library, like, come on, I can't complain. It's a library. Mm. Uh... I mean, it's part of a, it's part of a school, and it's a community library, like... It makes sense that it, it starts early. They open at 10 a.m. So I have to be there at 9.30. Alright, sorry for rambling. Um, fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I'd tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. Well, to each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Girl, you don't even know me. What's your beef? Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. <laughs> people can try, but that's about it. Yeah. I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well... Because! Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style shouldn't make your message any less valid. Ugh. Yes, 
Exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then I made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. Why does it do that? <laughs> oh my God. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is. But if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Mm -mm. This is a good poem, Fever. Are you sure it's your first time? Of course. It's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would be writing poems in his spare time? <laughs> I guess you're right. But that's why it impressed you. Impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously. Or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm just really happy that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in a classroom? Or a club room? Uh, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I s- oh. It's like I said before, Fever. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people? That's something only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah. Mm -mm. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Now, you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine. All oh, the music changed. The way you glow through my blinds in the morning. It makes me feel like you missed me, kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above. The sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. <laughs> Bye, hoodie. Just a guess, but... Did you wait until this morning to write this? No. I, just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Oh. Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to sc <laughs> Keep messing up the voices. Even though you were late to school? It's bad to skip breakfast. Me as fuck. I've always been super late to everything and like always found it really hard to care. It's like I can only- I only end up caring like 5% of the time. Probably even less than that, actually. I'm just chronically late, and I never skip breakfast. Like, I don't care how late I am, I'm gonna fucking eat, and nothing's gonna stop me. <clears throat> I get all cranky. Yep, me too. Oh wow, now it's working. Hello. Wait, why did you say I'm gonna sharp my jorts? I'm assuming that's a typo, but that's so funny because 
Jorts could mean like jean shorts or something, but I'm going to short my jorts. <laughs> what? there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. This was so much fun. Monica's the best. Uh, yeah. But, oh, the next time I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. My brother has so much downloading that my messages wouldn't send. Uh. Just unplug his Xbox. Well, I guess I look forward to it. I guess that's everyone. Glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. Younger siblings are a pain in the neck. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I wish I could unplug it, but he'd probably beat the shit out of me. No, uh... God, you don't deserve to live with that. That's so fucked. Mm -mm. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustra uh, frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Huh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one, one hand. You could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about feeling the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? Uh, I know that. I just meant... I miss my little sister. I can't think of anyone who laughed or smiled as more. Aww. I can relate to that, actually. I also have a little sister, um... I don't hear from much because we're both really busy. She's, like, super busy, because she does tons of, like, school and extracurricular stuff, but... I hope... I hope, uh... You can get to, like... Do you get to keep in touch with her at all? If not, then... What I try to remind myself with stuff like that is like, at least you had, at least, you know, I had that person in my life. That's what's the most important is just reminding yourself like, you know, think of good times and be like, I'm really glad that I got to experience that, even if I can't now. <clears throat> I'll trade my brother just for you. Both of your sisters to be here. <laughs> You'll sacrifice your brother. <laughs> the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it, and Beaver did too. And based on that, I'll gladly give you some su- I'm having such a hard time. <laughs> I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. 
I don't expect it to change anytime soon. Unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Mm. And Fever liked my poem, too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Uh-oh. <laughs> I love my brother to death, but he pisses me off so much it's hard not to wish he'd be sacrificed for at least a day. <laughs> Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh, that's not what I... Uh, you are... you're just... Yuri stands up as well. They were an obnoxious brat, but I loved it. They refused to sleep unless I was on call with them. Sometimes we'd play Minecraft and they passed out. Aww, that's so cute. And yeah, there's always a part of, like, siblings that you're, like, you have to accept that they're just gonna be obnoxious. <laughs> it's just like... Maybe you're just jealous that the fever appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way and make everything I do overly cutesy. Ooh. Oh. Um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as fever started. <laughs> what is this? What is this? What color? What? 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 <laughs> Natsuki. Um, Natsuki. That's a little... This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me, as if they just noticed I was standing there. Eva, she's... she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. You... she started it. If she could just get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should just jump at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Mm -mm. Help me explain that to her, Fever. W wait, there's no reason we have to... There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the, mo the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessary li unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Fever? Um... Well? How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So... Of course that's gonna be... Oh, shit. Uh... Oops. So, I guess what I can do, because, uh, I kind of decide if I want to go, like, you know, I'll decide later. But Natsuki. You're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait, that's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone else's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Mm, I understand. Yuri. Huh? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feeling into it, and it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when he said her poem was cute. I see. I didn't notice that I... I I'm sorry. But... but, Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yeti means well, and if you just told her how you felt, 
then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said them th yeah. <laughs> You both said them- said some things that you didn't mean. I think after a while my, my mouth just starts- stops working. Ugh. Ugh. Ow. <clears throat> you apologize. Don't you think you should too? Mm. Natsuki clenches her fists. In the end, nobody has taken her side. She's trapped. At this point, being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up feeling bad for her. Uh, um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Sayori, she doesn't need to... You know what? I'm going to do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash. Oh, Natsuki. She really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit, a, sit in an adjacent, adjacent chair. <laughs> I like that. I like to imagine that she just says sigh out loud. Sigh. <laughs> Everything alright? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. N no, Yuri. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. I love how they're all having these issues the moment a guy joins the club. Well... Alright. I believe you. Thanks, Fever. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you a part of this club now. But uh, it's nothing. One more thing. Oh. Um, and that one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. The fact that she brought it up again makes me think that she did, like, stuff some extra padding in her bra. <laughs> so, uh. Why is there a bug in my room? Why is there a bug in my room? Why is it going in the ceiling? No, what are you? Get out, this is not yours. The fuck? Gross. Ugh, whatever, all right. <laughs> eh? What thing did Natsuki say? Uh, um, well, never mind that. I'm gonna make some tea. Ah, good idea. Where the fuck did it go? I hate bugs that fly. They're like... <laughs> She's totally stuffing her bra. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Why is there a fucking bug in my room? How did it get in there? Sorry, I'm... Alright. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. <laughs> How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say that it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Beaver, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, We'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learned something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. I think to myself, I did learn a little more about the, t the kinds of poems that everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Beaver, ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. <laughs> Barry beams at me. 
It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. Can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. So, I'm wondering like if each time that I get to do a poem or whatever, if anything different happens, if I like, can I do, can I like split it into three? So that I like, you know, next time I write a poem, I write it for Sayori or, and then the, the one after that I do Natsuki and like, I wonder if that does anything, changes anything or whatever. About what happened earlier. Hmm? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... You don't hate them, do you? <laughs> Alright, that might be what I try. No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, that's all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. <sighs> you know, Fever, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. <laughs> and I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is gonna be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? Well, we'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I put- I, I pat Sayori on the, on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her. But it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Hmm, is that a little dino? Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. I gotta say it again. Since there's so many save slots, I might as well make one for every every point. But I like that one. All right, so let's see. What would say what he like? Um, hmm. hard for me to tell the difference between like her, well, like reading their poems. I can tell the difference, but in terms of words, her and Natsuki, um. Hmm. Maybe... So, let's try it. Neutral and direct. Maybe? I think was kind of her vibe. Shiny? Uh... Vacation? Uh... Sunny... Oh! I forgot to write things down. Uh, I think Natsuki's words are mostly... Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. I'm just... Um... Okay. It was shiny... Uh... Vacation... Sunny, I think. Zayari's are the depressing ones, I think, and Yuri's are the dark ones. Oh, um... Hmm. What about an ending? Hmm. Let's see. Shiny vacation, sunny, unending. Fireflies, peaceful, effulgent. What the hell? Mm, email. If. Ooh. Radiant or brilliant? Ah. Oh. Okay. We got a 
shiny vacation sunny unending nightgown starscape Disarray, Daydream Dream, Whisper, Starscape, Whisper. Oh, really? I thought it was random. I'm pretty sure it's random. Alright, Starscape, um... Fuck, was the one I just chose? Whisper. Why does suicide keep... Oh, uh, okay. Uh, scars... Breathe? Ah, oh, fuck. Mm. Whistle? Damn it. <laughs> now I'm all over the place. <laughs> I wish I could go back. I mean, I could technically to the beginning, but I don't. It's kind of shopping. <laughs> Empty. There we go. Okay, I guess. All right. All right. Uh. Misery. Ah, oh, she does say anything. Empty misery. Socks. Unrequited. Hmm. Oh. Unstable. God damn it. Melancholy. That's depressing. No. <laughs> Um, raindrop. No. Just to be sure that we get the results I want, I'm gonna... Because I took... I kept track of it anyway. Okay, so the first one I did was shiny. <laughs> I hate myself, oh my god. <laughs> it changes every time. <laughs> Great. Alright, I'll delete all this because I do want to write actual poems based on this stuff because I like challenging myself, so. <sighs> Grief. Alright. That's one for her. Uh, desire. Nope. Fuck. Uh. I'm gonna keep track still though, just in case, because I don't know. Uh, sadness. Okay. Hmm. After image. No. Uh. Now nightgown. Was that a hurt? God damn it! I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Whisper was a no. That was also her. This is, um, 
Insight? Nope. Hmm. Headphones? Ah, God. Peace. Nope. You'd be correct, not necessarily the big words, but the complex ones. Okay, so... <sighs> Broken... Alright, we definitely over more than half of those were wrong, so I'm probably gonna have to restart again, but who's this email? <laughs> of course, I was just curious about that. And let's not breathe. Intellectual? Nope. Okay. Disarray. No. Damn. Rain cloud? Okay. Fuck. Sensation? No. <laughs> Nature? I'm just gonna keep track of the ones that I know are right, and then I'll go back. <laughs> Captive. No. Maybe just hurt. Okay. Bed. Let's try this again. Mm -mm. Papa. <laughs> Alright, so do we have... I'm gonna say... Ocean? Okay, Ocean's one. I know... Milk sweet tragedy, shiny summer warm fear. Fear? Yes, sweet. Ocean fear. Um. Hmm. Cheer? Oh, cool. Cheer and fear. Memories? Cool. Mm. Grief? Cool. Mm -mm. Out. No. Look at the other list. Okay, so... Bed. Um... Hmm. Yes! Okay. Unrequited. Starscape. Damn it. I think it insight was one. Or scars. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
fireflies. Okay. I'd probably take this opportunity to get another cloth drop. Anger was hers. day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. Oops, my voice, my, my voice totally changed. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Fever. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to be you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you, anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. <laughs> wow, what the fuck? <laughs> eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sylady? <laughs> Why is that all of a sudden? No reason, really. Just wanted to look at it. <laughs> Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. <clears throat> she fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill into the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How do you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. So, either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. Mm -mm. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. <laughs> and so that only leaves the one option. Ah, uh, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yeti suddenly giggles. Huh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yeti. Tell Fever to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. Mm-mm. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is far fair enough retribution. Uh, did I just... I, I didn't mean that. <laughs> your suffering is fair enough retribution. 
Yeah, I like I like all of them. I think they're good characters. Monica's suspicious though. Even though I already know. She's, you know. I got too absorbed into my book. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yui. It doesn't happen much. But it's a fun side of you. That's there's no way you could think that. You're right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Revolution? Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me into the club before she even told me. But... but I didn't mention that it was hard to pick a favorite. They're very human characters, easily relatable in one way or another. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm glad I chose to play this game for inspiration. Because that's like... When you're creating something... Mm-hmm. I think that's like a huge... Part of it is is getting inspiration from other things. You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cup cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. <laughs> oh, that was. Huh? A, a cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. I, is this a miracle? <laughs> <laughs> Me as fuck. <laughs> if I got hit in the face with something and then I saw it was a cookie, if I didn't have my dietary issues, or if it was a gluten-free cookie, I would also just completely, like, not mind getting hit in the face and just be ecstatic that it was a cookie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is oh yeah, I would do it. weird. All right. It's because I paid my restitution. <laughs> Retribution. <laughs> Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you, but then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. N Natsuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Mm -mm. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. <laughs> Ooh. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a, takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez, beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? <laughs> Fine. Oh, oops. Still, <laughs> her voice just drastically drops. Fine. <laughs> Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Can't tell if someone knocked on the door or... gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Jeez. Uh, I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge. Okay, I'm just gonna keep this headphone off so I can... <clears throat> Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um, 
Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's the anime girl thing. It's the anime girl eating sound. Aw. Uh -huh. Or, I don't know how to do Thomas does it so well, it's so fucking funny. <laughs> I wish I could just- I should, like, make him make that sound and make, like, a, uh, and, like, record it and make, like, a, a soundboard <laughs> noise out of it. Saturday's <laughs> gluttony cannot be sated. Saturday <laughs> suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Uh, hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sari trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Where's Monica anyway? <clears throat> Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I... Oh, yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Where she's okay. I'd answer your question, but I'm trying not to talk more than I need to. Um... It feels like raw. It just feels like something is like just scraped. It feels like I I like coughed up a mini cactus. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she she has a I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all three of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Mm -mm. Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah. Oh, that's... I thought that was her. Ah, uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? chose the club over her boyfriend after all. <laughs> Why does my VTuber keep fucking spreading? I was afraid to ask what activity you've been engaging in to cause that sort of rawness. <laughs> Coughing up cactuses, man. You know, like, uh... Sword Swallowers from the circus? I downed cactuses. No, it's just... Unfortunately, it's only just, it's just been because uh, of work and talking so much. Because I had work two days in a row and then an interview. And I... I think it's also because... I mean, I've heard... I think other streamers get sore throats too if they stream like constantly. So I think it is just talking a lot. But also because I don't usually talk very loud or very much outside of work, so my voice, my throat just hasn't had time to rest and like, I haven't, I haven't done any vocal warm up, so. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so that I think. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend, what on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up, anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track, lost track of time. <laughs> I forgot that, um... Classes were... Called periods? 
because at first I thought she was like talking about her period period and I was like oh okay she went there not expect that <laughs> that makes no sense though you would have heard the bell ring at least I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano piano I wasn't aware you played music as well Monica uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a bit better, I will. Yay. That sounds cool. Think about, like, how long her fucking hair would be if she let it down. Oh my god. Mm -mm. That ponytail has, like, its own sense of it, it defies gravity it's defying gravity right now it's just constantly wishing uh that sounds cool i'd also look forward to it is that so in that case i won't let you down fever monica smiles sweetly and all the other characters are just magically swept from the screen uh i didn't mean to put any pressure or anything like that <laughs> don't worry I've been practicing a whole lot recently. <coughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's just from drinking tea and having cough drops. Fucking demons are trying to come over. <laughs> it was gross, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. God. Alright. And I really love the chance to share with somebody. Okay. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mis mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone was already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Uh, she just disappeared into the closet. Man. Looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slump down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yodi gave me, but I'm feeling too tired to read. i probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. Mm -mm. We're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. <laughs> Natsuki, get out of the closet. We already know you're gay. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is, the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know. We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. It doesn't solve the problem, though. Hmm? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place it's a, if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh? That's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What kind? <laughs> it looks like she's going cross-eyed at the mention of food. <laughs> mm -mm. Uh, well, I guess we could... Cupcakes! <laughs> Good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cus cupcakes. Cupcakes. <laughs> cupcakes. Oh my god, imagine little cupcakes with, like, um, cuss words just on the icing of all of them. Like, you get a batch of cupcakes and, and they're like plain like smooth white frosting and then you get like a little black icing thing and you just write like fuck and cunt and and what else like small words can you put on mm, ass 
Oh, let's talk about junk food. I need to make myself fudge again. <gasps> fudge is so good. You can make it? That's talent right there. Ooh, I remember in Mississippi, they had... I they lived in a bunch of different states. There was this, like, cool shop by the beach. Um... And you could go in and it was like a souvenir kind of place and they had a bunch of like seashells and other like cool stuff and hermit crabs that had painted shells and they also had a whole like so huge selection of fudge you could get of all different kinds of flavors it was so fucking good it was so cool uh, <laughs> ass cakes fuck cakes All right, I need to stop. Mm -mm. That works out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes sp speak to my creative tummy. Cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayati is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make, th make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Whoa, God! <laughs> uh, I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. <laughs> I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> Sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're gonna have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. He glanced over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> what I do best? That's a problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Eh, not every day. Fudge is surprisingly easy to make. I do make some damn good fudge, though. So live alone long enough and you pick up a few skills. Oh, I can't wait to live alone. Make us fudge. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Sadly, now, I'll probably never be able to have it again because I don't think... Like, it's hard for me to imagine a gluten-free, like, low-sugar or natural-sugar fudge would be physically possible. Because it's very, like, texture-based. Um... Right. That's not very convincing. How many days this week have you gotten up on time? Uh, it's, uh, it's a secret. I knew it. Uh, come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori. It's written all over you. <laughs> Sayori glances around at herself. How's it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Having stomach problems is the freaking worst. Well, it's not even that for me. It's like I will literally not be able to function for days on end. Be in pain, severe brain fog, severe fatigue. It's literally like I'm dying. <laughs> Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Uh, but stomach problems are also, also definitely suck because I used to I used to have those too, and every time like something happens where I have them again, I'm like, oh, I forgot how much this sucks. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. <sighs> Lots of patience and persistence. At least it helped me like overcome my. It helped it. It helped me with my eating habits because it was like. It was like every time that I, and my stomach issues too, how it feels like my stomach is like smaller than it should be now because, and it like hurts to, if I eat too much. It's like having 
It's like if I was trying to augment di my diet on my own and I had a strict teacher just like violently slapping me every time I did something wrong. Though it sucked, but it worked. Uh, I'm about four ounces of sweetened condensed milk. Oh, ooh, I miss like that makes me miss uh, snow cones too. Eight cups of dark chocolate. There's nothing sugar free about my fudge. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I figured, but it sounds damn good though. I love dark chocolate also. Oh my god. I don't really like milk chocolate. I don't, at least like generic milk, milk chocolate, because there's just something about it. But also, having sex like cut dairy out of my diet, every time I do end up eating it, there's something really off about it. There, there's just something like, even just taste wise, I'm like, what? What is this? Mm -mm. I don't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your brow isn't, your, your bow isn't straight either. I thought we were about to start critiquing her eyebrows. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right there. I try to wipe off the stain with my finger. But, but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Uh, oh geez, yeah, I have a similar issue because eating anything really screws me up until I, I get two bites and suddenly any more makes me want to puke. Oh. Nobody's, nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Unfortunately, I don't really care about that. But that's, that's how you know you got a good friend. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sally. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Aw, oh, come on. <laughs> if it's not at least 80% cocoa, it doesn't go in my chocolates. I just have IBS. BS sucks. Oh. Stomach issues suck. I blame the food industry. But no, it's awesome, Bale. I fucking love dark chocolate. Eh? That's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer up from the bottom. <laughs> Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> this is so funny. I thought she was just wearing socks at the bottom of <laughs> What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Eh? Don't say that. You make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay though. I'm happy you were like this. This is so cute. What? Aren't you? Uh, I guess. Hey, oh, hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one hard to close? <laughs> I struggle to fully close the button near your chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. Uh, if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner it doesn't fit you anymore. Really, it's not pleasant, not at all. Man, we all have issues. The coolest people always have issues. The worst issues. I swear to God. What are you- Oh. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs got bigger again. <laughs> Don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway. You look much better now. So, uh... Why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? But it's so stuffy. Uh, it's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily buttons her blazer once more. Hot people have digestive issues. <laughs> yeah, that's much better. Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? <laughs> Why are you saying it like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take care of me better than anyone else would, anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. So, this is so cute! If we were all the talk of issues, we'd be here for the next few weeks, I reckon. Probably. <laughs> Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Huh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. 
only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are taking care of ourselves. I guess so, huh? So, maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Aw, oh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share our poems we wrote now? Yay! Avery, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I feel to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. You should I pull up somewhere? Uh... I wonder if I just, after I stop streaming, if I just go, uh, for like an hour, my throat will feel better. Because I heard it's supposed to, like, be good for your throat. Oh my goodness. This is so good, Fever. Huh? I love it. Especially after yesterday's poem. Uh, you're too honest sometimes, Saori. No, but really. I want to put this on my wall. Can I? Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. You could totally do it now and I wouldn't judge. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opin opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you don't dislike it because I wrote it? Huh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of people, you know. So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a fever poem. And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. It makes me feel things. Then it must be a good poem. <laughs> I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. But again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me either. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Huh? <laughs> you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might at end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. Oh. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah, I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? Mm -mm. They can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud over your head, a sad poem can help the rainbow rain cloud oh give the rain cloud a little hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. It is? Maybe I'm getting a bit better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Fever. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Cool. What the fuck? <laughs> I, start, I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. What a sweet, like a dark chocolate with sweet filling. Mmm, now I want sugar. Fuck. Okay. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on a shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. 
each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way, down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after dream, er, friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my f <laughs> Sorry, um... Why am I like... Deeper and deeper my fingers go, like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off all- off my bottle caps. Oh wow, this is long. It doesn't, uh... It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done. I open up, and in come my friends. In they come, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, echo. Echo, 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 inside my head. Damn. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Sayori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. Like how to... <laughs> like how to be depressed. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. Almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to be you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, uh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Slayerty has always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimist. Uh, yeah, hard for me to be pessimistic. Oy. Man, I don't want to stop until I've finished all this. But. Is an illusion. Pain is an illusion. No, it's not real. It's not. It's good. It's fine. I'll be fine. I'm fine. Do I have a little bit of water left? I'll look at a little bit. Oh god. Okay. <clears throat> well, I can admit that it's better than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. Come to think- oh. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Huh? You think so? It's getting late, you do need to wake up at a proper hour. Mm. But I guess sleep is for sane people. <laughs> yeah. Plus, I can sleep in tomorrow because the rest of the week I should have off. Um. I don't think um, I'm probably not going to get a call back from the library for a while. And yesterday, yesterday? Was it yesterday? Yesterday was my last day of my last job. I just hope that my throat heals. The only thing I have planned for tomorrow is taxes. I'm waiting till I, like, the last minute to do my taxes. <laughs> uh, you think so? Well, oh, yeah, well, oh, fuck, okay, let me remember. Hmm. 
I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sodi has a... Oh, wait. Sodi has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so, uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Oh my god. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away, like letting go of a balloon. You could say that we take care of each other in our own way. That's so cute. <laughs> Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. She is gay, oh my god. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. <laughs> uh, where was I? That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if, what if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lo lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Oh my god. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. Hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this problem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. How dare she not like spiders? Pretty sure you don't like spiders. <laughs> <clears throat> and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like- oh, do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my- that doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to re relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone, and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn respect for others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good po good one for tomorrow, too. So look forward to it. Nice. That was cool. Alright, um... Uh-oh, <laughs> we'll see what Yuri thinks. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. This is pretty good, Fever. Were you influenced by seeing everyone else's writing styles yesterday? I guess you could say that. I was also a bit surprised by how differently everyone writes. So I respect you for trying new things. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like tur uh, turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's a very intimate exercise. I see. Is a certainly, uh, that's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. <laughs> the raccoon. I like how the music subtly changes, like, when you open the poem. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. 
That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. Okay. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife is the symptom. The bread, my, hung my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. On perhaps... Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. We could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. <laughs> this poem exposed Yuri to me. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pelovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Oh my god. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not very good at deciphering poems. But I can definitely appreciate them. Um... I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery, and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can even figure out- I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well... I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I like that. I like that's cool. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. Interesting. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So, I sometimes enjoy writing about that. Oh, that's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed, ridiculed for a strange interest? She... she did. Yeah. He was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She... she's right. I... I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's... well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry. I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. Uh, I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad that you're a good, good listener. Hi again, Fever. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy you're in you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> Wouldn't count on that. You never know. Wanna share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. Give my palm to Monica. Alright. I like this one. Makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had these sorts of things in common. Uh, well... We may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expe expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So, I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. Not sure you're reading into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh, gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Saiwari's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. 
I knew that someone so happy could enjoy sad things, too. Well, yeah, it's totally unexpected. To each their own, and you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit either. But anyway, I want... you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out. I hope you do, too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. Ooh, I really like that. Huh. I really like that. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem. Meaningless. Meaninglessness. Load me. Save me. Load me. Interesting. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abs as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. <laughs> you never know what might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? <laughs> what am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Mm -mm. Am I such a literature nerd talking about? Yeah, yeah, this is really cool. Okay, everyone. We're all done trading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today. So if everyone would come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with la last minute preparations. Don't worry too much. Oh. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Uh, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Uh, um, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up with and recite poems too. Coyote's putting it all, all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Coyote, <laughs> <laughs> who's been calling a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... you didn't already start putting up these posters, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I... I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys... No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember what... That Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone up until a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, 
I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. We start the event and each put on a good performance. Then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing our feelings, being intimate with yourself, <laughs> finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it takes us... All it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem. Then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. I'd rather not do that in front of a bunch of others. Yeah, but it's, it's good to like get over your fear. <laughs> well, maybe, but... Looks like Natsuki doesn't have any argument left. Uh... Okay, fine. I guess we'll just have to get it over with. Alright. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I, I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously gonna be the death of me. <laughs> Gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. You're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. Uh, no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <laughs> Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face I don't understand. <laughs> Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? Uh, I'll go next. Oh, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It, it's called... After image of a crimson eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. <clears throat> poem is... Well, I agree, but I was making a joke about the being intimate with yourself thing. Oh. Sorry, I didn't even read the... Okay. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri steps back into reality. Whoop, there goes gravity. 
and glances around her as if <laughs> she just started reciting the fucking Eminem. <laughs> as if she'd bewildered e even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her. We were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the, holds the poem to her chest and rus rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm next then. Clarity stops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Sayori. That's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? <laughs> Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself. Like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made uh, as a perfect match. Her poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Fever liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? Came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Huh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. Thanks. Or, er, or, er, that's... Well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges a little more. We don't have much time left before the festival, you know. Okay. <laughs> now, who's next? Natsuki. <laughs> don't make me go before fever. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Fever lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do. <laughs> Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. Might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy in it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry I'm not really good as, a, as everyone else. Natsuki's a savage. I respect her. Uh, don't worry about it. It's, don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Uh, why are you all looking at me? <laughs> because you're presenting. Mm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. <laughs> Natsuki takes a breath with her cold, dead anime eyes. When she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little enthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, that works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Uh, well... 
Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. And it's just my friends. Just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get through get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time that you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised by what that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. <clears throat> okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. I've been working out... It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. Yes. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica. But I'll do my best to get through it. She's buff as heck. So if it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh... How am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Fever. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. <laughs> I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today... Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on our way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. No wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Yuri wanted to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on a spot here. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I mean, I, ha I, ha I, have to, I have to tell her that I'd walk home with, with her. I, because I know what happens and I'm scared. I, I, I would still walk home with Sayori. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Huh? But... but... She's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in club every day. Besides, you also seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly. You think about me too much sometimes. Beauty would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides... What's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. <clears throat> the conversation trails off. I have a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. Ooh, okay. I feel so bad for Sayori, but she clearly has some sort of issue with her confidence that she's hiding. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, so that, oh shoot. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna choose that option. I'll just, I'll put it here because again, there's six, there's like a lot of save files, so I'm just gonna understand some of these feelings. Yeah, especially being in high school, man. Being in high school sucks. It's it's like being in high school is just like 
you know, like, a, you know, a, bre a breeding ground for bacteria. High school is like a breeding ground for depression and just, just mental disorders. Um, oh, so my throat is on fire. Oh shit, no, 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 no. I am going to end here. Um, but this was really fun. What? Wait, what are we wooding? High school is a breeding ground in general. <laughs> Oh god, that reminds me when my my roommate in college was like going through her yearbook with me and talking about how many fucking people in her class ended up pre pregnant. She was like going through the yearbook and she's like, oh yeah, this girl had a kid and like this girl did this and this. <laughs> it was fucking yeah. Oh, that's so awful. Oh my god. Thank you guys. So thank you. Thank you all for being here. Um, I'm, I'm really glad that you enjoy it. I really enjoy it. Actually, honestly, I don't know if I already uh, mentioned this, but um, I was I was in like a kind of, I wanna say, and it's funny cause my memory is so like, cause I'm just always like, go, 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 next thing, next thing. My, my, my memory gets really bad for like recent, stuff and just, just act in, in general for like past events but I know that I was in like a depressive slump for for a while and weirdly enough what pulled me out of it because I'd stopped streaming for like what like a fucking year and just caught up with other stuff and I kept thinking, oh, I want to stream again, but I just kept putting it off and putting it off because I felt like I had to be productive with other stuff. But as soon as I started streaming again, I felt so much better, and it really did pull me out of that depressive slump. And now I don't feel like every day is a waste <laughs> uh, just because that was just where my head was at and I couldn't get myself out of it. So I'm... Um, yeah, I'm really glad that I'm able to do this again and that you guys are here and they, you make it fun. So, uh, as much as I love talking to myself, obviously, <laughs> y'all, like, having other people there and even if you don't really talk, it, it, it adds like a whole, you know, I'm glad for that change to look forward to me. It's an awesome outlet and you're really into it. <laughs> Thank you guys. Y'all are awesome. Alright, well, it's time for me to close off my vocal cords for the next two days. <laughs> no, hopefully I feel better tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to play through this game more and everything. No! Alright, how do I fucking wait? Alright, there we go. Okay. What the fuck? Is it glad or what is it? Wait, what is this? What is this? <gasps> Whoa. Metaverse. Wait, 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 wait. I thought metaverse was like a Mark Zuckerberg thing. What? What is... What the... I can change the wallpaper? <gasps> oh my goodness. Wait, I can... What? What the f... What the f... <gasps> what? Don't mind me. <laughs> Why is that gonna break on stadium? <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh. <gasps> this is cool. What is. <sighs> Side stories. 
Ooh. The side stories are stories of friendship that are unrelated to the events of the main game. To get all six side stories, six, try writing poems for different characters and viewing their special scenes. Interesting. Cool. All right. Huh. Where's Natsuki? All right. Anyway, uh, five. Reset? Internal? What is this? What is- I'm so good. Huh? I- What if I deleted her? <laughs> I wouldn't mess with any of that. Oh. Okay. Alright, not yet. <sighs> okay, alright, anyway, anyway, good night everyone. I hope everybody sleeps well and all that stuff. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna make more tea. Bye! Uh, oh wait. I'm trying to remember something. Uh, oh, I think Ohio, Ohio mine means good morning, everyone. So, Oyasumi mine should mean good night, everyone. I don't, I don't know. No bath water tea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drink it fucking piping hot. I'm gonna burn my throat. I'm gonna burn the pain away. I'm gonna cauterize my sore throat. <laughs> Gamer elf bath water tea. <laughs> Oh, don't give me ideas. I'm just kidding. I've been doing that with soup the past few days. Yeah. Alright. Good night, everybody.